DNS set with only dig and date. You don't need anything more than that. Dates are in there. Okay. You do need to be sure to every so often change your keys. You can automatically change your zone signing key uh, usually every three months or so. And this can be scripted. There's lots of ways for a sysadmin to do that. Yes? Will the keys overlap because of to allow for DNS propagation? Yes. It, if you, you can specifically tell the key to not overlap. Because if you wish to shoot yourself in the foot, you are welcome to. <laughs> and in fact, in the case where your server is compromised, you might choose to do that. But extra signatures don't matter so long as any combination creates a valid chain of trust. So you can have last month's signatures and next month's signatures and this month's signatures all on the zone at once. Your zone will be a little larger, but... Okay. There are a couple different ways to do the, the rollovers. Uh, but the one thing you should know is the key signing key rollover requires interacting with the registrar. You go to your registrar and say, here are my new DS records. You wait for the expire time on your zone. You go to the registrar and you remove the old DS records. What's the average uh, uh, expiry time? Well, generally speaking, if you're following recommendations, it's about a week. So. Uh, or, I'm sorry, I asked the wrong question. How long do, uh, do your keys, do you usually have your keys go for it before they expire? Every three months. I'm sorry, every three months on the zone signing keys. Those are local. For key signing keys, every couple of years. Okay. Um, the one thing I would tell you to do is when you... Uh, one of the things you can do with a key signing key is assigning an expiration date. I would advise you to not assign an expiration date, but rather put it on your calendar. We all have a calendar system now. Um, my keys, for the last time, the calendar flashed up, they needed to rotate, and I was having my appendix out uh, as a surprise. <laughs> so, uh, don't tell it to automatically expire your last key, because then bad things will happen. How long, or is there a way of making the propagation of a new domain name, you know, take, you know, if I have a domain name that's being used by someone in China, does that take a long time to propagate? Is there something I can do to make the domain name more known to everyone? Uh, you play with the times in your zone file. You control that. If you look at a DNS zone at the top, there are some times set. And most often, people just take the defaults. But you can adjust that however you want. Now, the problem is not everybody honors those either. Not everybody honors it. And yes, um, if someone is still using AOL internet access, uh, one, slap them. <laughs> uh, and those people are going to have to start honoring it because their customers will complain that things are broken. And those people already have problems. A lot of load balancers are DNS based. So, uh, if you're generating keys, make sure you somehow keep track of them, throw out the old ones. If you have hundreds and hundreds of domains, you may find some sort of automated logbook useful. Okay, now this is the good stuff. Or th this is, why would you bother? It's nice that nobody can spoof www.paypal.com. That's great. If you've never been burned by someone spoofing paypal.com, it doesn't seem so exciting. But, 
remember, DNS is the world's most successful distributed database. You can put other stuff in it now. If you can trust it, um, some application vendors actually use an IPsec key record to provide the public key for the VPN device on your network. That seems kind of cool, except without DNSSEC, anyone could spoof that. Um, host SSH fingerprints recorded in DNSSEC. How many of you use, how many of you are still on Telnet? Damn, I was hoping to get a mob going. It's the end of the con, we could all use excitement. Uh, remember, when you first SSH to a host, the key fingerprint appears and says, this is the fingerprint, are you sure you want to connect? At this point, you are supposed to read that long thing, <laughs> pick up the piece of paper that has the valid host key written on it, that your system administrator has provided to you and painstakingly compare this key. You don't just click yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Comparison is something that machines are really great at. You now have an out of band channel to say this is the valid fingerprint. Put those fingerprints in DNS and on uh, the OpenSSH client today, will, uh, if you set host keys via DNS, will look, if it finds a DNSSEC signed SSHFP key, it will just automatically say, yes, this is valid. Do you want to add it to the cache? Or it will say, no, this is invalid. I like this. This changes that warning from just like yes to everything's good or ah! <laughs> So this, uh, this fingerprint, I'm just trying to understand. You're, you know, I, I don't know how to hand you a piece of paper if you're in China, right? Yes. So if you're in China, what you're supposed to do, uh, according to SSH, you can use fax. You can read it to them over the phone. <laughs> you, an out-of-band channel is how it, that key should be handled. Human beings suck at this. We really do. Now, if the key was something like Fred, we'd be all over it. But no, it's 48 or 96 characters separated by colons, hexadecimal, and most of us cannot successfully read that key string aloud the same way twice in a row. We're really bad at doing this. So what happens now? So I'm just trying to pursue this because, you know, if I want to work with someone remotely, I want to understand this well enough. So if if I publish that somewhere, that, is that a bad thing to do? Now oh, everybody no. can see my... These are public keys. Remember, public keys are All public. Right. You don't care who knows them. All right. So the other thing you can do, going back to the certificate authority problem, and yes, certificate authorities are a problem. Uh, more than one organization has issued fraudulent SSL certificates for major sites. Google, eBay, Bank of America, PayPal, Microsoft. And, you know, the Microsoft certificates, some of them were for code signing. This is really, really bad. It, it's, it hits the whole foundation of the internet. But, if you can publish the fingerprint of the valid SSL certificate for a host and even a port. Ten minutes, excellent. And you can stuff this in DNS. And right now you can get plugins for Firefox, uh, IE, and Chrome that they use libunbound, and they will check for these records and give you an additional uh, happy or frowny face. What about something like uh, Netcraft? 
uh, there's a plug-in for that, isn't there? That would would that give you anything useful? Um, not to my knowledge. It may be it. The last time I looked at the Netcraft authentication plug or validation plugin, uh, no. Um. The, the nice thing with putting the records in your own DNS is you control that. You don't have to wait for a registrar or a netcraft or any third party to validate this. You can just say, oh, we've rolled out a new server. Dear DNS admin, here are my key records. And then it's an internal organizational problem, which, at, yes, said. At some organizations, this is a problem, but at a technical level, you're good. SSH keygen actually has the minus R flag specifically for generating SSH FP records in the format suitable for a DNS zone file. Uh, but he does not yet support SSH FP. I expect they will as DNSSEC becomes more widespread. OpenSSH does if you set the verify host key DNS. So, if you are using DNSSEC to distribute SSL fingerprints, this means, strictly speaking, you no longer need a certificate authority if the people you work with have this plugin. Uh, I suspect before long, uh, there's discussion on the Chrome list of putting this check into Chrome. But you can put the fingerprint of your self-signed cert. I find it hilarious that VeriSign is one of the people that are pushing all the test tools. VeriSign knows that this is a problem. Uh, Plain and simple. If we are to... Ten years from now, we will have refrigerators that will look at what you have left and say, you're out of milk, and transmit an order. Okay, 20 years. At some point, before I retire, this technology will exist. If it relies on, in any way on unsecured DNS, one day, I'm going to come home to find 500 pounds of cow slivers on my front porch <laughs> because someone fold my fridge into ordering it. <laughs> so, you can use the, these SSL fingerprints to say, this is a certificate key. It is self-signed. And but the organization trusts it. You can use it to say, this is the key and it is signed by a, by a certificate authority with this key fingerprint. So you can write your own SSL certificate policy. If, if your company's policy is, we are VeriSign all the way. We only use VeriSign certificates. Uh, you can publish that record in DNSSEC. And uh, that Turkish fraudulently issued certificate is useless. Because anyone who's, ch who's checking for the fingerprint will say, oh, no, they only use here. And this may also help control things within your organization. Um, so, Ah, uh, how much time have we got? Three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Um, thank you for coming. I have, um, if you are interested in more in DNSSEC, I do have some some books. You can also buy the ebook at my uh, bookstore on there. And coupon code POPTARTS <laughs> with an S will give you uh, free books for 20 bucks. Any questions? Yes? Um, I'd like to uh, emphasize that 
along with storing SSL certificates, not only can you do HTTPS, you can do post uh, SMTP TLS, and you can do XMTP TLS. You can do any TCP IP port. You can say port 5621 has this key fingerprint. I don't care what protocol you're running on it, just that port has this fingerprint. So you could have hundreds of SSL certificates on one IP. If, say, uh, you're running a bunch of stuff behind a net, say, or you're just really insistent that you want every service to have its own certificate. But whatever. Uh, heck, you can put that on uh, some of the TCP ports used for SIP. Anything else? Thank you for coming. I'll be around outside of you if you want to talk.